Well, welcome you with the latest on headlines today. I am Preeti Chaudhary. In the latest coming in from Supreme Court, uh, the hearing in the Mudgal report has been suspended only to resume on the 1st of December. But the Supreme Court today lambasted the president in exile, N. Srinivasan, and questioned him for holding dual position. The apex court questioned Srinivas as to who took the decision to invest 400 crore rupees in the Chennai Super Kings. The court also quizzed the official, saying if CSK is involved in so much controversy, why not disqualify them? The Supreme Court also asked Srinivasan that he, as BCCI president, should have ensured that there is no spot fixing, but as team owner, he made sure that his team stays. This is a clear case of conflict of interest. The court also observed that Srinivas's son-in-law may not be the owner of CSK, but was still pulling strings in an indirect manner. In a lethal blow to Srinivasan's bid to return at helm, Supreme Court questioned BCCI about elections and why the body was not holding fresh elections. The Supreme Court also adjourned for the day. We'll now hear the case on Monday, 2 p.m. The Apex Court also said that Srinivasan and others should be kept away from fresh board and should take over and look at allegations. The BCCI, in a bid to damage control the situation, has proposed for an external commission to punish the guilty. The BCCI says external commissions be set up to hand out punishment to persons found guilty in the Mudgal Committee report. As I said, I have just stepped out of the parliament. I am not aware what the Supreme Court has said. And we are more than keen to look into the details what the Supreme Court has said. And BCCI will definitely act. All of us as a law-abiding citizen has to adhere to the orders of the court and especially to the orders of the Supreme Court. Well, the hearing right now from the Supreme Court has been adjourned only to resume on the 1st of December, Monday, 2 p.m. I'd like to bring in immediately at this point of time, uh, Borya Mazumdar, consulting editor headlines today. Also in the studio with me is uh, Nikhil Chopra, former cricketer. I'd like to cut across to Borya first. Borya, you know, the hearing will, of course, resume on Monday. And these are observations, not orders. Orders will depend on the kind of evidence that is on hand. But if you look at it, the biggest takeaways today coming in from the Supreme Court, what are they? One, Mahendra Singh Dhoni's name has been brought in and that is a big blow to the Indian captain. I mean, for the first time, an Indian captain is being dragged in a corruption mess like this. I mean, the case of conflict of interest against Mahendra Singh Dhoni is not new. Everybody knew about this for the longest time. The BCCI and especially Mr. Srinivasan ensured that it never came out in the open. So to drag the Indian captain's name in a manner like this is unprecedented. To point number two, it clearly is telling Mr. Srinivasan that you cannot continue to hold multiple posts. BCCI president, TNCA president, ICC chief, Chennai Super Kings owner, you know, all of these positions as managing director of India Cements can not continue to function together. There is a clear case of conflict of interest and it is basically trying to tell the BCCI move on, move on, hold polls and even if it means that you know Mr. Srinivasan does not fight the polls, so what, move on and hold your polls. Because from what we've understood from the BCCI so far is only if Mr. Srinivasan fights the polls will there be an AGM, otherwise not. The Supreme Court is telling them at their face that that, that is no longer a possibility. So there are a lot of very, very strict observations, Preeti, you summed it up nicely, they are not orders, they are observations, but even if you go by these observations the writing on the wall seems to be clear as far as I'm concerned the room for maneuver the elbow room is very very little the BCCI and you can see for the first time they're accepting that Mayappan was a team official for the first time they're saying let an external agency probe so these are all trying you know face saving attempts by the BCCI because they now realize that the Supreme Court is relentless you know Nikhil taking off from what Borea just said you know there are many layers to this and it'll keep unfolding as this hearing continues but the question of Rajasthan Royals the question of Chennai Super Kings and he was speaking to Lalit Modi earlier and that's the question we wanted to pose in front of him. Why the differentiation? Why isn't Rajasthan Royals being looked at on the same lens as is CSK? I have a feeling come Monday, uh, Preeti, I'm sure the court's going to take that up as well because if Gurunath Mayapan yeah, might not be the uh, team owner but the uh, honourable court's observation has been that he's been pulling the strings. Here you have Raj Kundra who was obviously questioned in terms of even if it was betting, you know, which is illegal. So in that regard, you know, you have to have the same yardstick for both the sides. So I won't be surprised come Monday or whenever if found guilty, even the Rajasthan team might just get disqualified and you're just left with a handful number of teams playing the IPL. You know, stay on with us, gentlemen. Uh, my colleague Atit Sharma spoke to Justice Mudgal just a while ago. We're going to listen in to what he had to say and then come right back to Nikhil and Borea.
Yeah, Mr. Mudgal, very strong observations made uh, by the Supreme Court bench uh, against CSK that the team should be disqualified also. These are the observations, verdict could be a totally different uh, thing, but uh, what, are, what is your viewpoint? What is your no, reaction? Part A. Uh, um, uh, during the course of the argument, if some observations are made, you should wait for the judgment or the order in the matter. Secondly, I am not, I have been saying all along and I will keep on saying it, as long as the case is pending in the Supreme Court, I will comment nothing about the merits of the report. Your report did not indict uh, in Srinivasan directly, but uh, there was, of course, this, this conflict of interest. Uh, did you mention something in your report about that? And are you happy that uh, look, uh, the Supreme Court is finally taking action? Look, there is no question of being happy. The only question is, satisfied, satisfied that uh, we should be satisfied that the Honorable Supreme Court find the report to be correct. That's about all. Beyond that, there's no happiness in one way or the other. And I can't comment on anything else. MS Dhoni's conflict of interest was also discussed. He was uh, being a CSK skipper, India skipper, and also an employee of India Signal. Was but that part of your report as well? No, conflict of interest was not referred to us. We had only mentioned it as many people spoke about it. That's about it. In the first report, which is totally public. Also, uh, the shareholding pattern of uh, the, where India Siemens, how much money was invested by India Siemens when they bought uh, in, by India Siemens in CSK, and uh, this entire conflict of interest by of N. did you uh, did you get into the, all that while investigating? Uh, that, I'm sorry, that was not in the terms of reference, and thereafter, therefore, I cannot comment anything about it. I'd like to cut across to Borea once again. Borea, the latter half, post-lunch, uh, what transpired in court was an argument on the external committee, which the BCCI is now trying to moot that an external committee be set up and look into the Mudgal committee report. But having said that, uh, there are many loopholes to that. Who sets up this external committee? Who are the members which are going to be of this external committee? First things first, assuming that the external committee is allowed by the Supreme Court, the external committee will also need time to adjudicate on the matter. Will the BCCI postpone the AGM, yes or no? Will the BCCI say as long as the external committee does not give a report and find, punish the guilty Mr. Srinivasan for the you know, reason that Mr. Srinivasan has to come to power, we will not hold our AGM. Is that the stand? Will the Supreme Court buy that stand? That is the most important point here. Is the external committee or the setting up of an external committee yet another mechanism to try and delay the AGM which was supposed to be held right. on the 26th of September? Secondly, your question, who sets up the external committee? Is it the Supreme Court? Because the BCCI's external committee or the assumed external committee was set up on 20th of April. We know that the BCCI came up with three names, one of them being Ravi Shastri. Now, if Ravi Shastri is external, I don't know who internal is. You know, so the BCCI's credibility to set up an external committee is at its rock bottom. Nobody trusts the BCCI that the BCCI is intent on cleaning it. Why is it that the Supreme Court has to force its hand? Why is it that the BCCI emergent working committee meeting, now that the board is saying that the Mudgal committee report is a gospel of truth, why is it that the BCCI emergent working committee meeting said everything to do with the report was, was wrong? Why did it say that Sundar Raman has to be back, Srinivasan has to be back, reinstatement has to happen, Rajasthan Royals, no problem, Chennai Super Kings, no problem. Suddenly, after Supreme Court observations, the Mudgal committee report becomes a gospel of truth. You know, there are, there are a lot of issues with the BCCI. It is because of the fact that there is mm -hmm. no transparency or accountability within the rank and file of the BCCI that today the Supreme Court has had to force its hand. So right. by suggesting this whole external committee thing, it is an attempt by the BCCI to face save. I don't know if Supreme Court will buy into that. Right. You know, you know, Nikhil, nobody is trying to set moral reference points here at this juncture. But having said that, where the BCCI is concerned, and if they ever talk about property in public life uh, and all that connected to it, then where the AGM comes into play, how long do you think that the BCCI can keep postponing it? Keeping in mind, if we look at today's observation of the Supreme Court, where... The Supreme Court has clearly observed that uh, the BCCI should hold fresh elections and keep Srinivasan away from that. I don't think you can postpone it any further. You know, this is a wake-up call and I'm sure, you know, the observations by the uh, court by itself to all the uh, BCCI members, there should be a clear message, you know, straight in the face. At the end of the day, you know, uh, the elections have to go on. You have to uh, come up with the AGM and maybe pick a new uh, board head. That is the important point because at the end of the day, <laughs> 
I don't think the message, Priti, could be any further mm -hmm. clearer that you cannot have Mr. Srinivasan at the helm of things. Well, you know, another thing what the Supreme Court said today was, and that's the first, is the name of Mahindra Singh Dhoni has come out during the hearing. The uh, you know, whatever the, the, the court uh, had, you know, observed today, it very clearly said that, you know, it is, uh, you know, let's go from top to bottom. It said that it is the, the, the company which owns uh, uh, IPL uh, franchisee Chennai Super Kings is, is the company India Cements. And India Cements, Dhoni is the, uh, the uh, vice president of the company. He is also heading the, the Chennai Super Kings. He is also the captain of the Indian team. So there is a conflict of interest there. Then the, then the court says that, you know, if the ultimate controller of, yes. uh, uh, you know, of the company and the board is controlled by the members of Srinivasan family and in this case, uh, you know, his daughter is basically married to Mayappan. So he said he, the daughter decides who the captain is and then the captain decides who the team, uh, you know, who, the, who yes. the team participants are going to be. So ultimately they say that it is directly or indirectly, it is, the, you know, the, uh, the Mayappan who is, contro uh, you know, controlling or he is part of the, uh, you know, ownership of the team. So ultimately, the, you know, in, in broader perspective, what the court was looking at today was that who owns this team ultimately and is Mayappan directly yes. or indirectly linked there or not. All right, you know, stay on with us, Ashish. Once again, I'd like to bring in Borea. Borea, you know, the name of Mahindra Singh Dhoni crop up, uh, which earlier also that you had outlined is no surprises. It was already being circulated. But what are we going to witness more? Are, <coughs> as this hearing proceeds, are we going to look at many more names which are going to now come out in the open? With your permission, firstly, I'll just uh, take off from where Ashish uh, uh, stopped. Give him 30 seconds, just clear that my upper part. You know, Gurunath was present in the auction. Gurunath was present in the dugout. Gurunath was present in team meetings. Gurunath had multiple meetings with Dhoni and that is proved to the Mudgal committee. Now, if he is not an owner or did not control strings, will, do you think that any ordinary person or a cricket enthusiast can go and sit in the dugout? Can go and sit in team auctions? Can go and sit in team meetings? That is not possible. So the fact of the matter is very clear. He was a very key member of the Chennai Super Kings franchise. Somebody who was privy to information, including team information, which could have been passed on to bookies. Now that is a grave, grave offense. The moment that happens, you have corrupted the edifice of the game. And if Mahendra Singh Dhoni lied about that particular person, i.e. Guru Nath Mayappan, then that is also a grave offence. Why is Mahendra Singh Dhoni intent on protecting someone who mm -hmm. has betted or passed on you know, serious information? Because and that's what he's done Mahendra in the first Singh report, hasn't he, Borya? Precisely. Precisely. And that is why he's been named in the first report for having lied to the Mudgal committee in his deposition. Now, why is he doing it? He is doing it because he is vice president of India Cements. He is doing it because he is captain of uh, Chennai Super Kings and captain of India. And all of us know at one point in time Mahendra Singh Dhoni's captaincy was on the line who saved him Mr. Srinivasan. So there are layers and layers and layers of conflict of interest here. And to come from Mahendra Singh Dhoni to come away clean from all of this is going to be a Herculean task. Now you've asked me about other players and other names. There is no question there are many other names involved, but it is not possible for us to speculate on a television channel, so we will not. Having said that, numbers two and numbers three, if they are critically linked to this case, and if, and I've been saying this for the longest time, if they have shamed the game of cricket, obviously the judges are privy to the report, they have read the report, if they think that certain players have shamed the game of cricket, those names will have to come out. Because there is no way you can do a cover-up on behalf of the players. If you if you are guilty, then you've got to be punished. Players who are not guilty or against who there is no conclusive evidence, perhaps those names should not come out. But certain players who have indeed shamed the game and against who there are conclusive findings, I see no reason why those mm. names shouldn't come out. But when you're talking about conclusive findings, Borea, at one end, of course, uh, there is... The opinion that CSK needs to be banned, but what about Rajasthan Royals then? Has to be banned. I mean, there is, there cannot be a double standard for CSK and Rajasthan Royals. If the Gurunath is guilty and CSK falls, then Rajkundra is also guilty and Rajasthan falls. It's as simple as that. As far as I'm concerned, both teams have violated Code 11.3C. Both teams face imminent suspension or termination. Whether it's for one year, whether it's for many years, we don't know. But at this point in time, both teams will have to face the same consequence. And more, because... You know, you've banned certain players. You've banned Srishant, Ajit Chandila, Ankit Chavan, etc. Why? Because they're soft targets, is it? You, if you have banned these players, most importantly, you banned Siddharth Trivedi for one year for concealing information that a bookie had approached him. 
just right. for concealment of information and here these people have been proven to be betting or insider trading passing on of key information there is no question that both teams Rajasthan Royals and Chennai Super Kings are in the dock all right appreciate you gentlemen for joining us Borea Mazumdar consulting editor in the studio with me was Nikhil former cricketer and Ashish Meruchi getting us the latest developments coming in from the Supreme Court well we're here with you